These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos by going to my website. There's a link to the website in the info box. Uh, here's the address of my website, uh, www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos.htm. That address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos.htm, uh, or you can just use the link in the info box. Uh, I'll also mention that I offer tutoring uh, via Skype, um, and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service also at this website. And again, there's a link to that site in the info box. Thank you. Uh, one more thing that is available at my website is a document um, that I've prepared uh, that uh, summarizes a lot of the concepts that are covered in uh, this video. <clears throat> a, a document that covers a lot of the concepts behind uh, rotational motion. Uh, so again, you can uh, go to my website at this address. You can just use the link in the info box. Uh, and you can find a printable, uh, a printable PDF document. Uh, that you can use to help you uh, in your, your in your studies for rotational motion. Uh, that would be a good document, I think, to actually go to my website right now and print out and have in front of you while you're going through uh, this series of videos. Uh, so again, I'd recommend going to my website uh, and uh, printing out the document uh, that I prepared that goes along with this series of videos. And if you have that out in front of you during the videos, I think that, that might help you uh, in learning the material. So uh, you said you wanted to focus on the concepts behind uh, question 85? Correct. Okay, well, uh, let's dive into that. So um, have you looked at question 85? Yes. Yeah. Did you have any idea what the, the general approach should be? A any thoughts about just what the general uh, approach is or, or not? Um, well, it just, it has a, it's, um, well, first of all, it's not a point mass. So I know True. that we're, we're going to have to take into the, um, do the net torque equals inertia then um, so I figured that we would just have to we have um, the angular speed so I just figured that we would um, you know get the get the 30 degrees and then break that and find our R instead of our R perpendicular this time and then and use that force to see how um, what's affecting um, the force that's affecting it, and then plug it into our net equation. Okay, that actually um, that that's not a bad uh, analysis. That shows that you're using uh, uh, the the gen you're trying to put that into the general framework we've seen before of using Newton's second law. So that's good. However, it turns out that there's a a much better way to do that type of problem. It would actually be uh, somewhat difficult and time consuming to use Newton's second law here. So it turns out there's another approach we should use instead, and this is another approach we've already seen before as well. This is a problem where instead of using Newton's second law, um, we should use conservation of energy. And we've talked a little bit about that uh, before, conservation of energy type problems. So um, let, let's review uh, how we would do that. So if we were going to do a conservation of energy type problem, well, first of all, we have to know what types of energy um, uh, are going to be conserved. Well, it's, uh, the symbol we're using for that is E for the mechanical energy. E is our total mechanical energy. Um, now, do you remember any of the types of energy we've talked about previously? Do you remember any of the, the previous types of energy we've discussed? Um, gravitational potential energy. Very good. And then there's uh, um, kinetic energy. Good. And then there's spring, spring energy, but that wouldn't apply here. That's right. So those are some of the types of energy we've discussed. Very good. Now, there's one more type that I don't know if we've discussed yet. Probably we haven't. So, so let's go back and uh, discuss some of these a little bit more. So let's talk about, say, uh, the kinetic energy. Do you remember what the formula is for kinetic energy? Um, one half mv squared. That's good. Good. Uh, and what do m and v stand for? Mass and velocity. Good. Um, now, uh, let's see. We used to call that the kinetic energy, but now we're going to have to call it the translational kinetic energy. That's the energy, the energy you have from your translational movement. 
Uh, kinetic energy means energy of movement, but now we have translational kinetic energy, and we also have your energy um, from uh, your rotational movement as well. So now we're also going to have to learn about the rotational kinetic energy. Now we can actually kind of figure out what the formula for that is by analogy. We, we, I think we've talked about all of our analogous concepts, how in, uh, in rotation there's concepts that are analogous to the concepts in translation. So how could you take our translational kinetic energy formula and, and update it to be about rotation? Do you see how you would do that? What would be the new formula for rotation that uses the analogous concepts? Um, instead of mass, we would use inertia. Moment of inertia. So we'd start with one half. And then instead of the mass, we'd use the moment of inertia. What was our symbol for that? Um, the alpha. No, inertia, um, that's the I. Capital I. Moment mm -hmm. of inertia is capital I. Okay, that's a good start. Okay, and then um, for um, velocity, we'd use omega. Good. And remember, what, what concept does omega measure? Um, the velocity of rotational movement. Yeah, the rotational velocity or angular velocity. Um, so what okay, can you mm -hmm. can you stop real quick and tell me like you have R O T K. What exactly? I guess I don't follow what sure. that is. Well, we used to use the symbol K for kinetic energy, mm -hmm. but now since uh, now we're going to have to distinguish between the translational kinetic energy and the rotational kinetic energy. So I've just made up some symbols here. For the, uh, the translational kinetic energy, I'm just putting a TR in front for translational. This, so now this okay. is the formula for the translational kinetic energy. And then we could say that the rotational kinetic energy, we just put ROT for rotation in front of that. Okay, so those aren't follow. symbols they use in the book, but uh, in the book they use subscripts. But in order to avoid getting too many subscripts, I'll just write that out in front of the letter. So I put ROT in front of the K for rotational and TR uh, in front for um, kinetic. Just like in this equation, I put GR here for gravitational potential energy, and I put SP here for spring potential energy. Does that make sense? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, so tell me one more time, what is our formula for the rotational kinetic energy? Um, one half of the inertia times omega. Squared. Squared. Because remember that we're taking the, uh, the formula uh, for translation and that had V squared. Okay. All right, and remember that I stands for a concept that's called the moment of inertia. Okay, so those are our, um, that's a new type of energy that we haven't discussed before, but it should be pretty easy to remember because it's an analogy with the translational kinetic energy. So going up to my formula now, I have to say that not only is there the translational kinetic energy, but there is also the rotational kinetic energy. So now we've talked about four different types of energy, four different types of mechanical energy. Gravitational potential, spring potential, translational kinetic, and rotational kinetic. Okay. Um, so, okay. That's our, so that's what E stands for. E stands for all these types of energy. Now, you're right that I think in this chapter you're not going to really work with springs. Uh, I could be wrong, but in this chapter you don't seem to be working with springs. So maybe I'll go ahead and erase the, the term for the spring energy just for simplicity. If there was a spring, you'd have to include that term. But maybe they won't be covering that in this chapter. So this will give us our formula for E. So far so good? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we can start working with conservation of energy. So what's the basic formula for conservation of energy? Actually, I think we briefly discussed that um, earlier. Uh, the, the basic idea for conservation of energy is E initial equals E final. Do you see how this means that the energy is conserved? Because conserved just means constant. So this means the initial energy would equal the final energy? Yes. Okay. And remember that when we were working on conservation of energy, then we started plugging in in more and more detail on the left and right sides of those equations. So um, let, let's try doing that. What could I plug in, say, on the left-hand side of this equation? Well, I could write gravitational energy initial. And what else do I need to write on the left-hand side of this equation? You need to write um, transitional um, kinetic energy initial. Translational, good. Translational, yeah. And then um, rotational kinetic energy initial. And these are all being added up because they're all parts of the total E. All right, and how about our right-hand side? 
um, that's going to be um, the gravitational um, I'm sorry, gravitational energy initial, I mean final, mm -hmm. and then the um, translational kinetic energy final, and then the plus. rotational mm -hmm. kinetic energy, oh yeah, plus. Um, okay. And then plus our rotation, right, okay. Okay, good. Uh, and actually now I noticed that I think we forgot to review what the formula is for gravitational energy. So let's put that up here. Do you remember what's the formula for the gravitational potential energy? MGH. You got it. What do those variables stand for? MG and H? Uh, mass, gravity, and the height. Right. And G is the acceleration due to gravity, our 9.8. Let's stop with the H for a second. You want to make a note that H stands for the vertical height. All we care about is the vertical distance. H is the vertical height. 